Welcome back to the channel. Today we have something very, very captivating <laughs> to show you here. Um, I had teased a, the first Wells Gardner D9200 on the channel to be featured a couple of videos back, I think maybe even last video, but uh, the parts that I've been waiting on to feature that have been delayed, so in the meantime, it just so happens that last night at the arcade, the medium res K7000 and the Paperboy decided to catch fire. So with what's wrong with this, uh, it's going to be quite captivating as to what what transpired here. And I've seen this happen before, but I have never seen anyone, anyone document the repair. So I think this will be a first really out there to get the idea of how to repair something like this because uh, it's quite the ordeal. So let's go back in time a bit. So this came out of a paper boy that belonged to my partner for the arcade and I didn't do the rebuild on this. Uh, this was done back in early 2017 uh, when he got the machine and when we went through all the machines, when we moved them all to the arcade, um, I went through all the games and made sure the monitors were rebuilt clean, all that stuff. Uh, and this was, it had been new caps and, but I never took it out of the frame to make sure it was refloated or anything. I just took a look at it and say, okay, it's got a new flyback, it's got new caps, it's been rebuilt, I don't need to mess with it. And it's been fine for five and a half years until last night when it decided to fail in catastrophic form. When I pulled the chassis out, I noticed that somebody had soldered the fuse directly to the tabs here because obviously the tabs were broken and they soldered the fuse right to the tabs. Well, I mean, okay, it'll work, but now you can't replace it, but it's not blown. And some of you more eagle-eyed viewers may already see the issue, but we'll go over that in a moment. I did notice that not only is it completely filthy, but the shutdown pot's been replaced um, and the cap here, the 4.7 microfarad cap on the neck board is bulging. You can see that that is about to blow its top there. But a lot of people say that the flyback, the replacement flyback won't work for the medium res K7000s, uh, but that's not a, not a true statement. Everybody's mileage will vary, but as you can see, there's a, there's a uh, replacement flyback in this chassis and it's been in here for five and a half years without issue so the replacement flybacks will absolutely work with the uh, medium res k7000s and even has the sticker on here from the date and it says right there 2017 october 2017 so this has been inside this on this chassis for almost six years without issue and this is not the cause of the fault what the cause of the fault is is the, hor the horizontal width coil has decided to catch fire. If we turn this around and look at this, this has uh, caught fire here and burned up severely. I mean, there's pieces, the entire PCB is burned and gone right there. I don't know if I can get a good angle on it. There we go. The whole PCB is gone. If I wiggle the H coil from the other side here, if I can, there we go. The whole, the whole PCB is just gone. Pad, trace, everything. And also R97 here is, I don't even think that that's attached to anything anymore. R97, there's no way. I'm trying to move it, but I, I can't get a finger on it here. There we go. I don't even think that that's attached to anything anymore right here and it's not there's no way so yeah r90 so this this pad of r97 is directly connected to the uh, width coil and the trace opened up there's nothing there anymore and this just cooked and cooked and it liquefied the solder joint and then it burned up this trace as well or this whole pad so R97 has completely burned up the pads and traces. This has completely burned up the pads and traces. And then whoever changed out the flyback damaged this pad. And they put this little metal uh, lead around here and tried to solder this. So I think this burned up as well. Because the, all the rest of these are good. And look at this one. Look at this one compared to the rest of these. I think this got very hot and burned up as well. Because it's connected to the horizontal uh, winding for the yoke which goes across over directly. So when the yoke is hooked up, it goes through the yoke, burns this up, 
across the yoke to this trace, which burns up 97, which burns up. So I think all this stuff got burned up. And I, I mean, they, they sent me a message at the arcade. They sent me a message, the arcade attendant said, hey, Paperboy is working, but the monitor's dark. I said, okay, so uh, they're not able to turn it off because the switch is on the back of the machine and they have to pull the machine out and flip the switch and I don't want them doing that. And I don't want, I don't, they can't turn off the entire breaker without turning off a dozen other machines. So I figured, okay, well, the fuse blew, so it's okay to leave it on. So uh, it turns out the fuse did not blow, but it sat there cooking. And I'm glad I went up there and, and removed it because it was cooking and cooking and cooking because <laughs> the way the circuit's designed with this out of the circuit, uh, it'll just burn all this up and the fuse won't get taken out. So that's what happened. The horizontal width coil uh, burned up. Now, how does this happen, you say? Well. This happens because the solder joints get oxidized. The, the medium res K7000 runs much hotter than the standard res K7000. And the solder joints will oxidize. And what happens when that occurs is it increases the resistance, which increases the amps, which increases the heat, and it causes these to oxidize and burn up much faster than normal. So I think when this got worked on and reworked, it didn't get reflowed properly. And as a result of that, uh, this just burned up now what we need to do is remove this and i think it's open i think the coil is actually open on one end uh because i, th I it doesn't have any continuity anymore i bet you if we were to just try and take this and pull it out here uh, no it doesn't just come right out because there's still holy crap this is can we i mean look at this it's just burned right through the the whole the whole pcb is just burned right through that is just insane so actually i'm going to take a picture of this that is just crazy hold on i got it okay sorry about that okay let's get this out of here so there's one intact solder joint one that one it just otherwise it just pulled right out oh my lord i was hoping i could reuse this but absolutely not This is a, this is a goner. I mean, technically would it work? I'm sure probably technically it would work, but uh, oh my word. I, I wonder if this even has continuity. Let's, uh, I don't even know if this would have continuity. This just fell apart. Holy cow. Well, yeah. Um, the thing, though, is with this is that the medium res has a different micro Henry rating than the standard res. So you can't just put a standard res uh, with coil in here. And as it turns out, I think I've got a compatible one here, so if we look at the part number, I got a bag of extra coils here. Um, this one is from a standard res, and you see here it says 9 alpha 297002, but this is a 9 alpha 2838003, but I just so happen to have a 9 alpha 2838 so you got 9 alpha 2838 dash 003 9 alpha 2838 dash 005 so this is going to have a different micro henry rating however it's just going to affect the the width but it is the correct base number so i'm I'm probably going to end up putting this in here just so we can test it and work because this is I'm not going to be able to reuse this and I don't have one in stock to be able a dash 03 that is to be able to use so I think we're going to be just fine being able to put this in there with the correct base number I, I think uh, you know I'm not a, that's why this is the amateur channel I'm not a professional but I'm pretty sure the base number is the important number and the dash number just indicates the micro Henry rating when it comes to how wide or how functional it is but so we're going to go that route and uh, obviously we don't need to recap it, but we're going to need to repair this. So 
Yeah, and the easiest way, obviously, you know, you can tell if it's a medium res because it has uh, what well, the what game it's running. You know, Paperboy or Tubin or APB. Uh, you know all that stuff so it's obviously it's medium res because of the game that's running big and also it has this little box on the side that sits right here on the uh, next to the chassis on the frame so that's a dead giveaway if you ever see one of these loose off of a tube and don't know what it is this is if you ever see this it's a medium res monitor or medium res chassis so all right well you know that's just crazy um, so what I need to do is probably I need to wash and clean this. I'm not sure if I want to yet. I want to get it fixed and then maybe do that. Um, but I'd also like a clean canvas to work with. Look at this. <laughs> Yikes! Wow, that's crazy. It also cooked C38. Look at the sides of the... C38's cracked on both sides. It got so hot that it, the whole circuit got so hot that it cooked C38 and baked the coating off the sides of it. And I'm really concerned about the yolk. I, I hope the yolk is okay because, I don't know, I smelled a little uh, familiar smell when I opened up that cabinet and I assumed it was from the chassis, but it very well may be from the yolk. If the yolk is burned up, then I'm going to have to LCD the machine because you're finding a replacement medium res monitor is not going to be something you're going to be able to do. And that's unfortunate. Um, uh, you know, finding a medium res yoke from a, for a, a monitor is going to be almost impossible as well. So if the yoke is bad, uh, we'll get this fixed. That's not going to be a problem. But if the yoke is bad, um, we're in a world of hurt. So, and that's how this, that's, this is very likely a cause of when they burn up like that. So, you know, it won't, won't be the end of the world. I can LCD it, but I, I, that's a last resort, and that very well may be what ends up having to happen. But I can get this fixed. It's not too far gone. I just uh, don't know if I should clean this. Yeah, you know what? Let's go clean it. I'll go ahead and clean, go clean this with Simple Green and, and uh, hot water, Simple Green, and a brush like this. You just brush all this free when you got after it's uh, rinsed with hot water, and it comes real, out real good. So. Yeah, let me get this clean. I'll come back and then we'll get have a nice, fresh, clean canvas to work with. I'll have to get this this replaced. And uh, yeah, um, I have no words. Look at this. Wow. So I'm just hoping the yoke is good. If not, it's going to be LCD time, but at least I'll be able to get this fixed here and uh, do, some, do something with it. So let me get this clean. I'll come back and we'll proceed from there. All right, and just like that, we're back from the bath, and we have a nice clean canvas here to work with. You know, much better than it was. You know, not perfect, but by all intents and purposes, it's a lot better. So now we can get going on trying to fix this, and the first step, we're going to remove this janky soldered-in fuse and replace the holders. I have a K7000A, a parts chassis here that's been picked clean with a lot of stuff. We're going to use the fuse holder clips from that. And we're going to see if we can successfully extricate this original holder here. little bit left on that one. What is the hold up here? Get out of there, you dirty, rotten scoundrel. Ruprecht. There we go. Jeez. Now let's see if we can snag this one out of here at a quick pace. Probably not. Yep, we can. All right. Well, there's that out of there. Might be able to reuse that fuse, but we'll cross that bridge later. All right. Now let's clip this off a bit. 
And, okay. Dirty under there still. And, right. Okay, so let's get these out of here. Am I going to be able to quickly take this one out? Probably not. All right, well, there's one. And there's two. And I got a feeling we're gonna have to get some more parts off of this thing, so we'll just set it aside for now. Um, as far as this goes, this one needs to go Here. And this one needs to go like this. All right, lay flat there, you. Okay. Successful replacement fuse holder installed. Can I reuse this fuse? So we'll take these broken pieces here and toss them in the garbage. And, hmm. I don't know, this fuse is pretty oxidized. I can clean those, the leads up here. Yeah, I think, uh, hmm. We'll grab the Scotch Brite and just kind of well, that works really well. All right, we'll take the points that have solder on them still and stick them where they're straight up and not going to cause a problem like so oh, not quite roughly like that okay that will work ta-da now let's make sure the fuse is actually still good visually it looks good and it is indeed, so... Okay, now the real work begins. Um, yes. How do I want to approach this here? Let's, uh, let's remove C38, because I'm probably going to replace C38. Because it got very hot. Holy crap, look at this. This is this cooked itself internally. Wow. So this is a goner. Uh, I don't think it's shorted or the fuse would have gone. And 
No, it's not shorted, but I am not abs absolutely not going to reuse this cap. But it ain't shorted, so we'll set that aside. Uh, R96 I have to extract because the leads are gone. If we zoom in here and look at it, right here you can see if I move it, it's just, that's gone. So R96 is likely toast as well. Take that out. Actually, it looks like the pad is still there. It's just very oxidized. We may be able to clean that up and reuse it. That may not be so bad as I thought. The resistor, on the other hand, is like... Like I'm, a couple of videos back, I talked about these resistors. If I, just the slightest touch here, I can wiggle this around and the the leaves are just super thin like it's it's so rusty and oxidized it's about to break off from the slightest see how easy this is to move i shouldn't be able to move that that easily it just feels like at any moment if i just tap it it'll break off it just it's very flimsy and thin there's nothing there's nothing left right there that's a, you don't want these thin little leads here on especially on a, on a power resistor like this so we'll probably end up changing that so C38, R96 are gone. Um, okay. The rest of this stuff seems all right. Just those two components, I think, are probably a goner. Um, so let's start cleaning up stuff here. Let's remove this abomination. Get off of there, you. There you go. All right. And we can just bend that leg over. They really didn't need that piece. I mean, you could just take this leg and bend it over and because that half of that pad is still there. So that's not going to be an issue. But this here, let's remove this wire not sure why they're grounding C38 but that may be part of the medium res mod I can't say all right so those wires are out of the way they can stay like that and I'm gonna grab I'm making a pictorial thing here as well to go along with the video so we'll have to want to snap a picture of a before here okay that will work now let's grab the fiberglass pen and just kind of go to town on this You know what we need to do is remove this solder here first and this one. So the, H, the width coil only actually connects in two spots here. It connects right here on this lead, and it connects over here on this lead. So these other ones are just like stability leads because you can see that this one, the wire attaches to this one, and the wire attaches to this one. So this one, this one, and this one are just stability pins. And that's basically what these three are right here. So you really only have to make sure it connects to this point and that point. Now why the re why this one burned up, uh, I'm not sure. Am I looking at that correctly? I want to brush all this off over the trash can. That should be how it is. So... 
I want to get rid of this. Yeah, that's destroyed. Well, we're going to have to do it that way. And I'm pretty sure we can clean all this up here. There's another lead here that we have to run to because there's this point, this point, and then there's another lead that went off this way, like that. So if we use this one as a guide, uh, okay, so those all just connect together is what it is, okay. So if we put this in, this will tell us really what we need to do. And it looks like it goes in thusly. No, that's not how it goes in. Is this one going to work? No, this is a smaller one. Crap. I can make this work by bending the legs. I'm going to have to going to have to do that. Uh where going to have to bend all these in and do a kind of Z here. Got to get creative a bit. So I bend it out and then make it like a Z, so to speak. That should work. See if that in does deed, in does deed, indeed does line stuff up here. If I installed it correctly, This needs to go like this. There we go, it went right in. How about that? So there we go. Now if we turn this over, there's how it sits. Just like that. We got this lead in here, those two leads in there. This one doesn't really have a connection and this one has to go, so I think I think this lead comes around here, goes, what, what is this one for? I think this is the other, I have to grab a K7000 and look, but I'm going to take a picture of this with this removed, then we'll stick it back in there. And then we will solder it in place to hold it there. But of course, it's never easy. Do, 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 do
There we go. Okay, that one's in. That one's in. And as far as this one goes, we can bend this over. And do this. Okay. That will work. There's those three now. Um, <laughs> I kind of got free range on those two. I'm going to have to... Let me see if I can find a seven, a regular standard 7,000. I'm going to have to dig through my parts pile over here. Give me a second. I'm going to cut away and come right back. All right, so here we have a standard regular 7,000. And this is one that will use either. I can use either the large one or the small one when it comes to circumference. By the way, you guys know the fattest knight at King Arthur's court? Circumference. There's your joke for you. Joke of the day for you. Okay, so it looks like... It looks like uh, C38. Is there a resistor across there? Okay, so that's not supposed to contact. Okay, so that is no connection. So let's look here. If we look at this pad that was missing, it goes over here across from this point to this point right here is a resistor. But on the 19 inch medium res, this resistor is not populated. If we look here, you can see that that same thing there, it's this this pad right there. So there's a component that goes across here like this, and it's this this jumper. Actually, it's a jumper. Hmm. Now I'm curious. Is that jumper supposed to be there? If we look, because if we look on this one, come on. If we look at this one. I don't think so, because that jumper would still be attached to that solder joint right in there. So I don't think anything actually goes there, because that joint, yeah, see they've got where that jumper would normally be, that's what this white wire is. So that's what this is. Okay, so there we go. We've got the mystery solved. So on the standard 7000, there's an actual physical jumper across here to here. But on this one, they've got this wire here instead, like as an afterthought. So this, there's supposed to be a metal actual jumper across here, but it's not installed. They use the wire instead. So, okay, we don't need to worry about this pad here because this will connect. Oh, you know what? That runs over to that one. Wait a minute. This is the one that runs to that pad. Hmm. Well, I don't think that jumper was ever even there, quite honestly, because... There's no other pad there. If we look at this one again, that jumper jumpers across to here. And, but they've got it going to the opposite side. Yeah, well, I don't think that there was ever anything there because we would see the burned up remnant. The, you know, if there was a jumper here and this all burned up, we'd still see this side here that was in the in the hole. And on this one, it's not there. There's nothing, there's nothing there in that hole right there. There's nothing there. So I'm, 
No, 99.99999% sure that we don't need to worry about that. Okay, so if that's the case, then we can simply add some solder to this exposed trace. Call that good. All right, so now we need to connect all of this all the way around here. So this, this goes all the way around here like this. It's all one big trace. And if we verify that, you can see that this point here runs around through all these and up to this. There you go. So now we have to figure out how to connect all this together here. So if we do the same thing with this one, uh, this trace should run all the way around through all these up to here and it does not so we're gonna have to fix that now this here is gonna have to also be fixed this is uh, abhorrent this one here is abhorrent as well wow holy crap Getting a picture of that one. Maybe not. Okay. So that is gonna be R90, one leg of R98, and we're gonna have to push that guy through here. If we can. There we go. He is through. Now let's clean up the whole thing here. And it's gone. <laughs> the whole thing is gone. Wow. The whole thing is gone. Maybe we can salvage it. Let's clean up the leg here. And fold it over. Let's see if we can. I think that'll work. I need to clean it all first though, so before I take a picture of it, that is. Now the rest of this stuff should be able to just Actually, I'm just going to do a one big, there we go, help that heat transfer. All right, so you can see the idea here of, you know, helping the heat transfer on these medium res chassis that run a lot hotter than normal. So that's the idea with that. So, okay, I think that is getting us where we need to be. We just need to... Do that, and maybe this a little bit. Okay, just co covering up the exposed uh, trace that I did there. All right, now I have to figure out how to get this around over this way. I think what I want to do here is maybe I can use some solder braid. Might be the best course of action here. 
because that'll come through in a pinch if you need to create a trace. And not only will it do that, it'll it'll conduct very well. It'll transfer the uh, amps that I need. So if we were to solder this to there, and fold this around, that could go right to there. It's not going to look very good. And I'm sitting here having second thoughts about doing that. But I mean, if we were to flatten that and stick it through there, I could probably make it look fairly decent. We can try it. Mm, yeah, let's we can try it here. Let's see if we can first solder this to here. Okay. Then we can poke this through here. Maybe. Okay, there's one. Bend this around. Poke it through this one. Okay, there's two. And then this will go directly to jail. Do not pass go. Just like that. Okay, now if we were to cut that. All right, I think that'll work. I mean, that's about all I can really do. So then if we solder that to there. Okay, you got that. Now we wanna Fill the rest of this. Well, I think that'll work. Now we should have continuity from here all the way th through up to here. Oh, my meter's off. That's why I always check. <whistles> yep. Okay. Well, um, I think that might be about all I can do with that. So let's clean it up. Clean it up. Dun -dun 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 now clean it up. Get rid of some of this. Oh, that's all char. Solder all night. Go, go, go. <clears throat> all right, so that might be about as good as I can make it. And I don't think anyone's going to complain because that's about all you can do. I'm sure someone out there will uh, have an opinion on how to make it better, but or I would have done it this way or I would have done it that way. Well, you're more than welcome to try if you ever encounter this yourself. Okay, now, see if I can get a picture of this. Uh, 
Alrighty, now I think we will tackle this here. Alright, so that's all still okay. But, need to clean this up. Okay. Or is that Okay, well, what do you know about that? All right, so that's fixed. Um, while we're here, we can go ahead and do R101 mod here. There we go. And the other side. Actually, r is not too bad. like that's a bit better okay all right now we need to get another R96 because I don't trust this little these little flimsy legs here so um Six from this seven thousand A. And let's make sure it reads one point eight volts. I mean, I stole it from the seven thousand A because this one doesn't have it. It's gone already. I've already picked that clean. So I stole it from the seven thousand A here. And it's a higher uh, wattage, so that'll actually help us in the long run. So let's make sure it reads 1.8K, and you can't see it on camera, but come on. Uh, that's not good. Maybe that's why the 7000A was uh, parts chassis. If we read this resistor, that's why I have to check, folks. Okay, 1.8K. All right, good. I must have looked at it wrong at the wrong angle, but that will work. All right, so let's get this in here. And I'll be happy with that higher wattage resistor, for sure. Okay. 
All right. Bada bing. And let's clean it one more time real quick here. Well, one spot left to fix, and that is, oh, let me get a picture of this real quick. We'll snag that, and that, and let's actually clean this real quick. I ain't no psychiatrist, I ain't no doctor with degrees, but it don't, don't take much IQ to see what you're doing to me. Okay, now what we can do here with this is, is that all flux or is that heat? That's heat damage there. But I am able to somewhat clean it up. But that's PCB material that I'm scraping away there, so that's definitely a burn. Ooh, burn! Jackie. We can, I don't know if I can bend that leg over or not, but we don't really need to do that. We can just blob it. Blob it. Flip it. Spin it. Flick it. That'll work. So I think that'll be all right. Okay, now let's clean this again. Let's just clean this whole thing here because this is pretty Pretty doity. Pretty doity. Sometimes you have to help it along. Not dirty no mo. All right, we'll get our uh, C38 installed and that'll be about it. It'll be time to test it now. Unfortunately, I don't have the correct tube with me or the correct setup, I should say. However, you can run a medium res 7000 on a standard res 7000 yoke for testing. You don't want to run it for, you know, half an hour straight or any length of period of time. But for just a quick test to see if it functions, you can uh, turn it on, check it, make sure it works, and then that's all you want to do. But it will, it will work. I've already done that testing and verified, so... Boy, this looks terrible over here. Not sure what's going on with any of that. Oh man, these video, the video header pins are all cracked also. <laughs> so whoever worked on this, uh, they, Kind of half-assed it, but it wasn't me. Like I say, this was, I took a quick look inside the machine, 
when we moved it to the arcade and I noticed it had been capped in a new flyback so I just assumed that it had been reflowed but that's my mistake however it lasted five and a half years before it died catastrophically so you know got to give it some credit five and a half years of constant operation not constant but you know every day give or take all right let's hit these yoke header pins and I like to bridge D18 and I guess D18 isn't even installed nope D18 isn't even installed so we'll just hit that header pin depending on the mod status of the board uh, not every one of these has a D18 installed and I've I haven't I haven't learned the hard way but I've learned that if there's no D18 installed, D18 doesn't need to be installed. But putting one in won't hurt anything, it just doesn't need to be there. So, uh, a couple more places here. Let's hit that. Um, actually, that was D18 that wasn't even installed. Let's hit this. Uh, voltage regulator seems all right. All right, so we're gonna get a new C38 installed, then we'll go through and test all of our other components. If everything passes and works, then we'll give it a try. Ribbon cable is always... pretty thin on the solder for those, both ends here. There's a ribbon cable right here it always has uh, iffy solder joints on the two connections, so I always check those. I think that will suffice for testing here. So, all right, let's get a new C38. And I don't know if I'll be able to see what rating the old one is. Uh, it's probably a 0.39. Yep, 0.39. So let's grab a new one. And I've got a, a bunch here. 474. I can't tell what the hell that one is. 224. 334. I think that's a high voltage cap, this one. Now it's 474. Uh, 224. That's the high voltage cap there. Okay. That's a high voltage cap also. Come on. Where am I freaking? 474. 474. 154. 474. 564, going the wrong direction. 394, there we go, 0.39. 394J, which equals the 0.39 from the factory. So here's our replacement width cap. Uh, it's 250 volt, 394. And that pretty much equates to this. This is 200 volt, 0.39. I don't even know if you can see that, but yeah. I don't trust that cap, it's burned up, and it pretty much liquefied, so even though it's not shorted, uh, it's not going to be good. Alright, so let's get this guy in here, and we'll have to bend these legs a bit, but not a problem. And you can use the old component to see where you need to bend your legs. And... Yep, that's pretty good there. We need to remove the solder from the pad. There we go. Get rid of that little guy. Wouldn't worry about that little guy. And we'll get this in here. Thusly, there we go, and 
and nope, we, there we do not go. Gotta help the guy along here. All right. So let's solder that in. Bring our wire back over. Boys and girls, that's about all we can do. Let's do one final cleaning. We'll test all our components. See what we get. By the way, if you don't know what I'm doing here, I'm just taking the the denatured alcohol and, and off the dispenser here and spraying it in the toothbrush and going right to the board. It kind of limits the amount that you use because if you just if you just coat the board, then you end up using uh, a lot more and you run through a lot more of it than you need to. So. I think that's about all I can do for now. Let's get some testing done here and let's start by cleaning our workstation. That didn't really do anything and I don't want to spread these bristles, fiberglass bristles up in the air so we're just going to coat a little bit of the rag here. And clean this off. All right, set that aside. And here we have it. So let's test our components. All right, so our voltage regulator, we're just gonna go to the B plus resistor and verify it reads uh, 200 ohms, or no, 180. 180 is what this is gonna read. And this should, this reads, oh, voltage regulator is gone. <laughs> All right, um, so with this reading, this means our voltage regulator is 6.8 ohms. It should be, uh, this should read 180 ohms. And if we go to pins three and f or one and four on the, the wide fat one like this, uh, it's pins one and four. So diode mode, we should get our uh, 0.16 voltage drop. However, I bet you it'll read shorted. There you go, six ohms. So voltage regulator's toast. Okay. Uh, what about our HOT? HOT appears to have survived. Uh, C38, we just installed it. We're just checking to make sure that it's not reading shorted, and it's not. Uh, okay, we'll go to R96, which is the one we replaced, which is this guy right here. Not the ceramic one, that's R89. R96 is that guy. We'll read it from the bottom side, which is the one that we fixed. That should be 1.8 ohms, which we've already tested it, but in circuit we get 1.770, that's good. Okay, now R89 is the ceramic one that's supposed to be 3.9K, and we get... Might have to go on the bottom side for this one too. 3.857, that's fine. Um, R101 is the one that we add the, the bridges to. It should, be, uh, it should be around 5K in circuit. We get 4.78, all right, so that's fine. Uh, R104 should be 15 ohms, 
and we get 15, 14.9, 15. All right, R103 should be three ohms, and we get 2.8. Uh, we don't need to really check our rectifier dials because the fuse isn't blown or wasn't blown, but we can check them anyway. 19 is good. Uh, 20 is good. 21, good. 22, good. 24. And 23. All right. Well, um, I think that's about it. C38 is good. Uh, HOT is good. R103, R104 rectifier diodes. R101, R89, R96. We didn't check uh, R97. Should be 270 ohms. We'll just grab it on the top side here. Hopefully, there's no oxidation. And I already can tell you it's good. 270 exactly. So, uh, critical safety cap is going to be okay because uh, if it was shorted, our HOT would have read shorted. But again, you go diagonal here, you go from these two points to these two points. So, bottom left with the negative, top right with the positive should be 0.46 voltage drop like the HOT. Uh, well, if you're in diode mode, that is. There we go. Now switch to leads, other diagonal direction. There we go. Uh, critical safety cap is good. So I'm sure there's probably something else that we don't normally check that might have gone bad. We can check uh, R91, R92, 1.2 ohms. And this one should be 1.2 ohms also. 1.3 and then... R91, R92 are for your vertical deflection. Um, then you have D13 and D14, so I think D14 is here. And that's good. D14 is the opposite leads. Switch, switch them around. And we get... Oh, no, I had them backwards. So this direction for 14. And there's our 0.5 voltage drop. Switch them the other direction for 13. And... Yep, that's fine. Okay, well, um, we'll change our voltage regulator and see if uh, that gets us going again. Uh, here they get my bag O parts, and we need the 3130, 123. Sorry, 123 is a 19 inch. So, we definitely don't want to put the wrong regulator in there. And I got rid of all my counterfeit ones, so it looks like I've only got two left. And I ordered $914 worth of parts from Peter at Arcade Parts and Repair, so uh, I shouldn't be out of anything for quite a while! Most of that cost was, uh, I got five, count them, one, two, three, four, five D9200s I got to work on. So most of that cost was cap kits for those because there's so many caps, they're 50 bucks a piece for the cap kit. So let's check this replacement first. Again, you want a 0.5 voltage drop out of circuit across pins one and four, 0.589. And you should not have it across one and two, or no, one and three. Okay, two and three. Yes, so one and two, and one and four. That's a normal reading. So let's uh, get this one out of here. I am curious though, I talked about how I got rid of all my counterfeit parts. And let's just make sure my other one reads the same. Because these came directly from Peter at Arcade Parts and Repair. I have no doubt that these are accurate. Because the counterfeit ones, do not read across one and four. I think the counterfeit ones, I think were two and four. Yeah, see two and four are, op are one, are no voltage drop. So these are good. We'll check the one I was gonna install. Should be the same thing. Um, two and four, yep, same thing. So these are fine. I got rid of my counterfeit ones. I wish I hadn't so I could show you exactly what the counterfeit ones read and how they read incorrectly. But, um, We'll have to save that for another another time, I guess. 
if I can acquire any more counterfeit ones by accident. Because how can I counter acquire counterfeit ones on purpose? <laughs> so, all right, enough uh, jaw jacking here. Let's get this changed out and, and test this puppy. Turn my fan on here real quick. So that's out. Well, desoldered, I should say. Okay. And all of the pins are loose. Now let's. Are those a quarter? I think they are. Yep, we'll get these loose. Here's the question. Did the voltage regulator fail and cause this? Or did this fail and cause that? I don't know. I'm more tempted to say that the solder joints on the width coil uh, caused all this, but you would also think, well, how can the fuse not blow if the voltage regulator is shorted? Well, I don't know. It, it didn't. So I don't have the answer to that. So now you'll see with the voltage regulator out, we should get our proper uh, 180 ohms across the B plus resistor. We get, there you go, 176.5. So now if we go across pins one and four, I'll bet you a reed shorted. Seven ohms. So goodbye, Earl. Those black eyed peas. We'll put our replacement in here. They tasted all right to me, Earl. We'll pack a lunch. Stuff you in the trunk, Earl. My name is Earl. That might be the quickest and easiest voltage regulator replacement I ever did. That went right in there. Original insulator is still good, didn't even shift on me. Plenty of uh, thermal compound in there. No need to replace, they don't get that hot, so there's no need to really replace it. Well, I, I said earlier, these, these run hotter than the standard reses, but not, not the regulator talking about the other onboard components here so let us solder that puppy in and get ready to test this here okay We'll clean up that real quick so we don't have to worry about cleaning it again later down the road. When we're all done with testing. And just like that, hypothetically, this should be fixed. So, there you go. Let's get it on a tube and see what happens. All right, so we're all hooked up, ready to go. We got anode, neck, yoke, ground, power, video, and there's no remote board. The remotes, or I'm sorry, the remotes, the pots on the 19-inch chassis are on the board itself, so don't got to worry about that. But I could almost hear you guys clamoring right through the video, through the magic of, you know, they have what's called smell-o-vision. 
Uh, in this case, we got uh, yell o vision where I could hear you guys yelling, hey, you forgot to change that cap on the neck board, and you're right. I forgot to change it. But fortunately, when I was hooking the neck board up, I grabbed the neck board and hooked it up, and I was staring right at that cap, and I, I saw the cap, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot to change that. So <laughs> uh, I did change it. Here's the old one, put the new one in. And I promise I have not turned it on yet. So if we turn this around, you can see that the cap is replaced right there. Brand new cap. So yeah, that's the last step. Uh, and disregard these wire nuts. The, this is just a test tube, a tube I use for testing. If I was to permanently put this in a machine, I would fix those properly. So don't uh, yell at me for those. So I assume this is going to work. And if it does, it's probably not going to look very good because we've got the wrong width, width coil in there. And this uh, was on the tube in the paper boy is very dim and weak and the blue gun is almost completely gone. I've tried to rejuvenate it twice and it didn't take and it starts out okay and just gets worse and worse. So I think the blue is cranked. Yeah, the blue is 100% cranked on the cutoff. So it's probably going to be way too blue. It's probably going to be way too narrow. But I'm only interested to see if it works. We can make adjustments and fix that stuff later. So let's just see if it works. Cross our fingers here. I've got a, a medium res a cruising USA board on the test bench. I like to use real boards any, any time that I can, as opposed to a TPG. Uh, so let's see what happens here. Cross our fingers. One, two, three. Oh, it came on. Very quiet, but I think that's that bleeder box. Do we get a? Yeah, do we do? All right, we have fixed it. But you can see how the focus adjustment and everything is set for that other weak tube and you can see how blue it is and you can see how narrow it is. We got, you know, uh, two inches on each side and that's that wrong uh, micro Henry width coil. But let's see if we can just adjust some stuff here and make it look halfway decent. Let's turn our color pot back to the middle here for blue. Let's just put all of them in the middle because they're all just, let's just get a good baseline. I'll have to redo all this on the Paperboy monitor anyway. So let's just put all these to center and see how good it looks, how much better it is. Well, I mean, it's a little better. Like I said, you don't want to run this for like 10 minutes. You, you want to make your adjustments, make sure it works and call it done. So let's, uh, I'm going to adjust the contrast and brightness here. Contrast down, brightness. You know. We've got some raster lines here. So let's turn our flyback down a bit. Can I see it? There we go. Okay, and there we go. All right, now brightness right there. Contrast, I like to put there. So now let's hit the focus. Focus! Okay, and let's see how good. And there we go. Well, it works. We fixed it. Medium res 19 inch K7000 on a standard res tube and yoke. But let's see if we can shift our vertical position or horizontal position right there. And we'll put it roughly in the middle right there. So there's a centered image. And you can see that we have some type of fold over here and fold over there. And again, that's due to that wrong width coil. And let's shrink our vertical size. And there we go. Now, again, you also have to take into account that this is not the correct yoke. This may end up being fine on the, on the right yoke. So what I need to do is pull the actual tube out of the paper boy and probably bring it home and or work on it. Now that the chassis is repaired, I could probably do the necessary repairs to make it modified to work on that paper boy tube at the arcade. Uh, but for now, this was just to see if we could proof of concept get this repaired, and we did. So, and it doesn't look half bad. Uh, I just wonder if maybe I could even adjust this, just out of curiosity, with tools, with tools. Here we go. And I just wonder if we're able, able to actually get the width tool and put it in here and adjust this and see if it does any different. Because I could always change out the... Oh, this doesn't turn. Darn it. I got to use brute force with the actual Allen key here. Never ever do that. What I'm doing right now with the actual physical metal Allen key, never ever do that. But I got to break it loose. Okay. Now it's loose. Now I should be able to use the plastic one because it got stuck. Uh, nope. It doesn't want to turn still. Let's try this one with a little bit 
more oomph to it. Okay. No, not really. Well, let's just go back to the Allen key because it's it's loose. We're not going to break the ferrite core, so we just go back to the metal one. The problem you run into is that if you use the metal one, you drop it, you're going to short out your chassis. So again, if you don't want to do this, you can do it with the power off, but yeah. Uh, let's turn this off, actually. And let me adjust this core all the way out because down shrinks and, and up increases. So let's just... Uh, and I got to be careful because it is only being held on by, what, two joints? So I may actually probably just go all the way out with it that I can. And, uh, oops, see, that's why you don't use wire nuts. That just fell off. Let's move it out so I can get a better adjustment on it here. And let's move it out as much as it can. And then I'll just probably have to change out the width cap as needed. Again, it could be perfectly fine on the actual medium res yoke, so I'm not going to worry too much about it, but I'll bring my width caps up to the arcade, and uh, if I have to change the width cap out, I can do that. So, Okay, that's about all I really want to do right there. You can see that uh, it's out that far, so I'm going to drop this. Uh, there this cap fell off, but it'll be all right. So let's put this back in here so we don't damage anything. Okay, that's sitting in there secure and safe, and that's not touching anything. We can put that back on later. Okay, now with that, uh, not all the way out, but out enough to where uh, any more won't really help any, anything. Let's uh, see what it does now. Here we go, one, two, three. This, yeah, the scope of this video was just to make sure we could get this fixed and repaired. See, it didn't really make any difference at all. It made no difference. So it's not the right uh, width coil, but I can compensate by just putting in a uh, a uh, different width cap here. H position. Let's shift that over a little bit. It's too far to the left. There we go. And we can... We can move that by the horizontal centering pin that's in there on the jumper. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, we're going to be good to go. There's no reason to make any more adjustments because it's not staying on this tube. It's not the right one. Let me get this up here. So now I'm, actually we're too far to the right. I just want to make sure we don't have any fold over. Not that it matters, like I say, on this tube, but uh, right about there. Okay. So, yeah, now we're equal on here and equal on there. We just need to spread the image out. We'll do that with a width cap. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is going to be the only option I have is to uh, leave that width coil in there because I, I, I can order one from Peter. I might just do that. I'll order a replacement from Peter. He's got the medium res ones, but he doesn't have the standard res ones. So he's currently working on getting the standard res ones available, but the medium res ones, I think he actually has. So I'll probably order a replacement with, uh, with coil from him and get this repaired properly. But for now, we have a successful repair of this exploded K7000. So yeah, uh, the parts for my D9200 should be here today. So next video should be the 9200 for the first time. So stay tuned for that. Thanks very much. Like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate it. And we will see you next time.